Hey friends, welcome back here to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. My name is Hunter on this Wednesday, December 17th, 2025. In this forecast, we're going to be looking at two big winter storms moving across North America. Who's going to see the snow? Who's going to see the rain? There's going to be plenty of it across portions of North America. It's just dependent on where that will fall. We'll answer that question in the video and look at a very complicated long range part of the forecast as we move through winter into January and get you the best educational guess on what could happen as we go into the new year in this forecast. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe to the YouTube channel and turn on post notifications because we'll likely have a video again this evening and so you're notified for future videos. Without further ado, let's get into the forecast here. And we got two big winter storms moving across North America. Our first one already taking shape here and underway across the Pacific Northwest and Southern Canada as that low pressure is in Southern Alberta at midday. That's gonna be moving southeast bound into North Dakota and northwest Minnesota heading into Thursday morning. Attached to it is going to be a powerful Arctic cold front that's going to be bringing us a lot of wind and a lot of cold air. And then as we go into Friday, another strong 980 millibar low pressure will be moving through the southern prairies of Canada, of Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba. And this could also bring some wintry precipitation to folks further to the north. So let's look here at the wind. This is going to be a big deal with this system. There are over 16 states that are under either wind advisories or high wind warnings at this hour, and it stretches from the Pacific Northwest all the way into western portions of Missouri. If you extend that from the immediate west coast there of Washington State to near Kansas City, that's 1,500 mile stretch of wind alerts that are in place right now, and a lot of them are high wind warnings. So let's look here at the wind gusts heading into midday today. Yes, they're already 80 miles per hour plus across western portions of Montana. As we go into the evening hours, it's going to start to move further east into portions of the Dakotas, including the Black Hills region, into the panhandle of Nebraska and Colorado as well. And that's where we're going to start to see wind gusts over 80 miles per hour. And then going into Thursday, look at these winds screaming down the plains from northwest to southeast. These wind gusts from Kansas into Nebraska, the eastern Dakotas, getting into parts of Iowa, Minnesota, and Orange could be over 70 miles per hour. That's going to be importing a lot of that colder air behind that Arctic front. And then as we go into Friday, a little bit weaker further east, but it's still going to be breezy over here into the Ohio Valley. Wind gusts over 50 miles miles per hour in some localized areas and then here comes our next system bringing some gusty winds on Friday here as well so it's going to be a pretty windy week so if you have any holiday decorations make sure to secure them or bring them indoors for a few days because it's going to be a real windy one going through the rest of the week not to mention look at the precipitation strong system 975 millibars in southern Alberta Canada and this is going to be spreading in some colder air to the valleys and peaks here of the Rockies of Canada and the United States the Cascades over here as well going to be getting some real healthy replenishment of some snow so the ski resorts are going to be definitely in full force with snow this weekend and then as we go here into Thursday morning look at that tight isobars up there in southern Manitoba northern portions of North Dakota into Ontario that could be a blizzard that could be moving across those areas snowfall rates one to two inches per hour wind gusts 40 50 miles per hour plus that could really reduce visibility near whiteout conditions. Further south, we got mild air in the green. This is rain, right? Across the Mississippi Valley there. So areas like Des Moines, uh, Madison, Milwaukee, and Chicago are going to see some of that. And then maybe some stronger thunderstorm activity we may need to watch on the leading edge of that Arctic front as it moves through portions of Cincinnati, Lexington, Nashville, and even Evansville there in Indiana. Some strong wind gusts with that possible and some very heavy rainfall. And then that surge of Arctic air on the backside. That could give us a flash freeze if any of that liquid doesn't really dry up on the pavement or any surfaces out there. With the Arctic air coming in very quickly, our temperature Temperatures could be crashing literally from the low 50s to the single digits in one single day across the Midwest Ohio Valley. That would cause a flash freeze. And then as we go into late here into the week, into the weekend, here's another system bringing more snow further to the north. Here's the rainfall output going through 7 a.m. on Monday, December 22nd. Notice it's heaviest across the Pacific Northwest over here. We zoom it in and double digit rainfall totals has been a theme over here the past few days. I do expect that to continue 
for Washington State, Oregon, and Northern California as we go through the weekend. And like I mentioned, double digit totals, some feet of rainfall possible here literally in the West. And looking here at the snow, feet of snow as well, we could be seeing potentially 140 inches worth of snow across parts of the US and Canadian Rockies, the Cascades. And look at that big snowstorm from Southern Manitoba through Central Ontario and Quebec. That's where we could see a stripe, a narrow potent stripe of one to three feet of snow between now and 7 a.m. on Monday, December 22nd. Looking here again at the wind, it's going to be a windy week. Uh, make sure to, again, secure your holiday uh, decorations outdoors and or bring them indoors for a few days because our wind gusts could be strongest, peaking at maximum 100 miles per hour today across portions of northern Idaho and western portions of Montana especially. And looking here at Christmas week, a lot of talk about a big ridge of high pressure building here across portions of the middle of the country. Our airflow around Around a high pressure system is clockwise, so it's going to go like this. Here's our low pressure just off the coast of British Columbia and the Northeast Pacific of Canada. Uh, that is going to have airflow moving counterclockwise, right? So around it like this. And then there is that huge blocking high up there toward the Aleutian Islands of Alaska. So what's that going to do? Well, it's going to be pretty mild the last 10 days of the year um, here across the lower 48 outside of the Northeast, maybe hanging with some Arctic air. That could give us some below normal temperatures for that 10-day stretch. The real true Arctic air mass will be bottled up here into Alaska and Western Canada. So for Yukon, the Northwest Territories, Northern British Columbia into Northern Alberta, that is going to be ground zero for some real cold temperatures for the final 10 days of the year. It's going to be very active. Our Pacific jet has no let up in sight over the next 10 days. This is going to be giving us some real heavy moisture and even further southward into the Sacramento Valley of Central Southern California, getting as far south as Los Angeles there and San Diego. So even Southern California getting some moisture. And then there's that polar jet that's going to continue to give us some clipper systems across Southern Canada. Now, without the subtropical jet really being a feature for the final 10 days of the month, the southeast in that ridge of high pressure as well, helping out to give us some drier weather and warmer temperatures across the southeast. Here is Christmas morning, and our snowpack is going to be minimal across the areas south of the Great Lakes and really across the U.S. in general. You have to go to the upper Midwest, like Minnesota, Wisconsin, and the northern part of those states, New England, or out west into the mountainous areas, the Sierras, the Cascades, the Rockies, Otherwise, it's Canada where the snowpack is going to be plentiful on the ground, and that is going to keep the colder temperatures further to the north. Here's Christmas Day afternoon. These are temperature anomalies, 30 degrees above normal here across the heartland of the country, and we're going to be hard-pressed to see snow on Christmas Day with a look like this. Here are the early indications of our temperatures. Notice the freezing line up here where the blue and white come together. That's far north. That's way up into the upper Midwest, into the Great Lakes there and into the Northeast. And then there's the warmer air into the oranges. That's where we could be surging into the 60s and 70s further south, as far north even as the Ozarks of Missouri and Southern Illinois getting into the 60s, 70s, even some localized 80s along the Gulf Coast for Christmas Day is apparent. Here is the European model for potentially a strong system watching out for the Rockies and the Western United States. The GFS model and very good agreement. So I think it's going to be fairly unsettled across California and the West for Christmas Day. Now we look at teleconnections. Here's the complicated portion of the forecast. We're going to kind of comb through this a little bit quicker um, than you would probably like, but just to kind of give you a general overview. This is the Arctic Oscillation, or the AO. Notice it is positive right now. It will trend neutral. So that kind of means it's a variable pattern to where you can kind of get some cold shots from the Arctic to move its way southward here into the lower 48 of the United States. And then you look at the NAO, the North Atlantic Oscillation. Positive right now. It is forecast to go quite negative, and that is going to help out a little bit, at least for the time being. That's one of the teleconnections that will help. But the PNA, the Pacific North American Oscillation, is negative and it could go very negative. That really doesn't bode well with major Arctic blasts that are widespread across the lower 48. 
Instead, that keeps the cooler air across the west and the warmth and the ridging further east here with a look like this. You really want the PNA to be neutral to positive to get the colder air, more widespread Arctic air further east. Here is the European output from last night on the 16th, and we do see a little bit of stratospheric warming happening as we go into Thursday, Friday, which would be December 18th, 19th. It is not a, as big of a stratospheric warming that we saw back here earlier on around Thanksgiving, but it definitely is a stratospheric warming that we have to pay attention to. So we're going to look at two long range ensembles here and kind of decipher what the models are showing here at this point. Again, this is more of a trend forecast at this point. Looking at the ensemble guidance from the European, it shows the lower pressure over here in Western Canada. That's going to keep the cooler air really bottled up over there. Maybe some shots of cold air in the West, but look at the ridging here in the East. And there is that negative NAO and and then you look here at the CFS daily. And again, this does struggle a little bit sometimes in the long range. So keep that in mind, a little bit of a warm bias, but you can see we do have a warmer ridge across the east and some cooler air connections from the Arctic. And again, our cold source region is not far away. It's in Canada. We just need that colder air to push further south. So looking here, at the 31 day average for January, it does look really cold in Western Canada. I think that's pretty much a guarantee at this point. We're getting heavy snow leading up for the next 10 days. That snowpack is going to enhance that colder air. Even Alaska gets really cold as well through January. And then there's a signal for some colder air in the West. How far East does it go? How far South does it go? That is important. There's the ridging that you see with the warmer air. Again, this is a 31 day average. Just because you see red in the East does not mean it is going to be a blowtorch all January. Just keep that in mind. Now we look here at the same ensemble, the European ensemble guidance, week by week. Here's the first week in January, very cold in Western Canada, a lot of warmth sticking around in the central and east. And then as we go into week two, notice same thing, maybe getting a little warmer in the east here, but still indications of some cold shots. Then we go into the second half there of January. And again, it's really the same thing. It's the west getting cold, where the west had a ridge into December we might have a trough into January. So it might be a complete pattern flip according to the European Extended Ensemble. Here is the 31 day average from the CFS daily. Again, to struggle sometimes with looking at cold air and warmer air, but again, it is a long range forecast. It's a trend anyway. We look here at the colder air again, looking at Western Canada, that's pretty much ground zero. And it's pretty similar with the European for week one, keeping that real cold, true Arctic air in Western Canada. There's that ridge. It actually builds that ridge even further up there toward Ontario, Quebec. I have hesitancy to say that's going to happen because Ontario, Quebec is going to have a lot of snow over the next, say, 10 days. I don't feel like our warmth is going to go that far north, so there is a little bit of a warm bias there. But as we go here into week two, notice it has a different look. It moves the colder air further south. This could be associated with that stratospheric warming I showed you, and then that potentially would break the dam, and we could see some real cold air, such as what we saw in 19. 1979 of that January back then. So that will be something to keep an eye on here to see if the dam breaks for cold air. Here's the European Extended Ensemble. Take it for what it's worth. This will change a million times. But again, southeastern and southern Canada out here in the west, we're going to see some real heavy snow opportunities through January. Yes, it's void of snow in the Ohio Valley in the northeast and the southeast. I understand this is just one model run. Here is the GFS Extended Ensemble kind of continues the snow train further north. Here's the Canadian weeklies as well. And again, it has the snow line further south, but another bias here is that the Canadian weeklies are a kind of more cold bias. So it actually would have more snow likely on here than probably what would happen. So just keep that in mind as well. So very complicated long range part of the forecast. That's really all the weather I got for you today. So make sure to like, share, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. We'll kind of comb through some of this new data this evening again, see what is new and what is trending there in the long range and especially looking at these next two winter storms coming through a lot of heavy snow and a lot of wind as well so make sure to stay safe out there traveling over the next few days as the holidays are getting closer thanks for watching thanks for the support everybody and i'll see you all in the next video